Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the 9 to 5 Fitness Podcast. Got a huge guest today. My name's Louis. We've got Anabolic Gabe on. Gab, how are you? How did you sleep? Mate, I'm pretty good. Boxing in the morning. Had a very good sleep. Lots of restorative. Up at 6 a.m., mate. How are you? How do you sleep? Very well. Slept like an absolute baby. We've mm-hmm. got the an athlete goat. Yeah, I'm a gym influencer as well. A gym influencer. How did you sleep, gym influencer? Oh, Liam Dowling. Liam Dowling. Thanks, guys, for having me on. Uh, two good mates here, so it should be a good little chat. Uh, yeah, how did I sleep? Let's... Fuck, I can't even honestly remember. Mm, that's a good sign. Oh, no, I actually slept well. I went to bed around 12. Okay. And then I had a meeting for um, my podcast this morning and I was a bit tired, but yeah, slept well. Any um, drinks last night? Yeah, I was flying back from Sydney. Mm, so I'm a bit of a nervous flyer. So I'll have like 20 beers at the airport. <laughs> nah, I had, I had a couple of pints at the airport and then yeah, had I, one on the plane just to get rid of those airport nerves. I so. saw one of your stories, right? Best types of beers you can have. Do you want mm. to give us a quick top three of yeah the top best three? Beers? So number one's airport beers. Mm. I've concluded that because I've been traveling so much over the last like period of time. I just think when you're at the airport, you just have that excitement mm. to like. It's like when you're at pre's. The beers at pre's are better than the pre's at the event because mm. you're like anticipating something fun happening holiday starts at the airport and yeah, yeah whenever you're at the airport you know that you, it's going to be fun like you get to go on a flying bus yeah. and you're like fuck yeah yeah so i'd say airport beer is number one, number one. It, the only downside is they're so overpriced i was paying like 18.50 a beer mm. for a pint of carlton it's like the mcg and, uh, it, it's you're like oh it's like 18 bucks like whatever it's kind of like buying a beer at a club and I was like, I bought three beers. That's 60 bucks. Yeah. So it's... Crawling up. It's not ideal. But is it three pints? Yeah, three it's pints. So a like five, four and a half beers. You, you, you're feeling it by the time you get on. I yeah, feel it after was, one pint. And yeah. then uh, when you get up in the plane as well, like the high altitude, it just oh, makes you f- makes so you much drunker. emotional as well? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like facts. Well, I'm always sad, so it doesn't yeah. make it any worse. So but, that's um, number one? Yeah, number one. Number two, I had uh, knockoff beers. This is especially for any like physical workers out there. Mm. Shout out to the tradies. Because yeah. I know when I was laboring for a furniture removals company before I became a big hotshot celebrity. Yep. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But yeah, when I was, when, <laughs> no, when I was laboring before this, I, it'd be, you'd work from like five till f- five sometimes. And then at the end, you're so physically exhausted, you're just filthy, oh. sweaty, and all you can think about is, oh. and a little cold, eye, like the perfs, perfs, perspiration, whatever yep. that's called, on the outside of the can. Condensation. That's the one. Yep. Mm. Just crunching that, they, that is a, the second best beer for me. Have you seen those VB ads, like the um, hard-earned thirst ads? Oh, thirst yeah, yeah, quenching. Yeah. speaks to it, doesn't Whenever it? I see those, I'm like, oh. Oh, skinny dog. give me one straight um, skinny dog. Yeah, well, I did a top five. I can't really... Th- the third is either day beers, mm. free beers, or shower, shower beers. beers. Yeah. But I'm leaning mostly towards day beers. Because free beers now are just like... Oh, yeah, you probably owed me one anyway. Or yeah. Whatever. So it's like... It's not often that you just get like someone go, Oh, out of the blue, here's a free beer. Mm. Like, that tastes nice. So I'd say day beers because drinking during the day is so much more fun. So. To an extent, I feel like... I think I saw your story reply, so I replied to it when this was up. It's like, mm. I feel like a bit of a degenerate mm. if I'm drinking during I feel the day. guilty. Yeah. And yeah. You know, it catches up. Well, I don't, I don't pump iron as much as you guys, so I don't really think about it too much. But um, I, can, I can see why you would probably, probably think that. You're getting there. Mm. Um, for people that don't know, who are you? What do you do? So I do comedy sketches. Like I write and act in my comedy sketches. My channel's pretty much a split with me and my videographer and good friend, Zach, Mm -hmm. who does a lot of the work too. Um, Yeah, started out on TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. doing the same sort of thing. Uh, And then I knew that I always wanted to act and write. So I knew that YouTube was a better like uh, venue for me to pursue that because it was long form. People take Mm -hmm. it more seriously. And yeah, been lucky enough for the last two and a half years now to wake up and make videos and do what I really love. So it's been good. Um, Yeah, and also now making a podcast, which, yeah, I'm copying you guys, but it's good. Now I'm finding a real passion for that now because it's so fun and like, it's like good to feel like I'm building something and like building a new audience that are just more loyal because watching like a four minute video of me playing a character, I feel like you don't quite get the same like connection to me that you would from like a long form content 
like mm. podcast where you're listening to me yep. talk about my life. So yeah, that's where I'm at and um, living the dream really. It's a real mature step like getting into podcasting I think like that's mm. in, in terms of a business or in terms of content. Yeah. Where did it start for you? Like what was your first video and what made you want to get into it? I think I remember like some of your stuff from back in the day. Yeah, so I started making TikToks in COVID 2020 because I had to move home to Albury which is... Um, a shithole. <laughs> Country and, um, town. Yeah, it sucks. There's nothing to do. And I was watching so much TikTok and I was like, I could do this. Like, I could make these. Um, and it actually started out from Ben, who's here in the crowd. Shout he out, sent me a video on uh, Facebook that he just made. And it was like him playing two characters. And then he like, mm. it was just this dumb little sketch. It was like 15 seconds long. And I saw that and I was like, fuck, like, I could do that. I don't need to have mates to play other characters. Like, I could just play them all myself. Um, so yeah, I started doing that for a bit and then I was kind of just like doing the whole looking up on YouTube, like how to get viral on TikTok and stuff. And I was doing all the cringe, like use the popular sounds and shit and it sucked. <laughs> and then as soon as I started doing what I actually wanted to do, which was write and make sketches that I was talking in myself, like that's when I really started to see some growth. It was like small in hindsight, but I got to like 15K followers and I was like, oh mm. God, like this is... I'm famous and rich. Yeah, I made it. And uh, I remember I got recognized at Woolies once by the That's dude huge. work. And he's like, oh, are you that dude on TikTok? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, he was just like, oh, I like your vids. And I was yeah. like, God, now this is getting serious. Pack your bags. We're going to LA. Yeah. So, but then it was kind of quiet for like three months after that. And I was posting every day, but it was, they were all getting about 10K views. And I wasn't really going up in followers. And I was like looking at the growth time. And um, I was like calculating how long it would take me to get like 100K. And it was like two years. I was like, oh, I can grind to get 100K in two years. Yeah. Um, but then I kind of like lost a bit of interest. And then COVID kind of died down for like a month. And I went back to Melbourne and I was just drinking and mm. going to uni and doing that sort of shit. And then I was like, oh, do I give up on it? But then COVID happened again. And they were like, oh, no f- jokes. You're going back into lockdown. Yeah. So I went, back, I went back to Albury. How good. Yeah. So COVID was kind of a blessing for me. I know it fucked a lot of people's life. But for me, it completely changed it for the better. So that was a good thing. Yeah. Um, and then I went back and I made this one video called Waking Up for School in America versus Australia. Oh, the America versus Australia. Oh, and, they um, went so well. Yeah. I, I'd sent it to Ben and <laughs> said, do you think that I should post this? And he's like, oh, it's... Not like typically what you'd normally post. Like, I don't know if it's that funny. Maybe just like, don't. And then I was in two minds. I was like, oh, do I, don't I? And then I ended up just posting it. And then I went to bed. And then the next morning it was on like a million views. And I was oh, like, yeah. fucking hell. That's man. unreal. And none, I'd never had a video on a million before that. The highest was like 200K. Uh. And then the video got to like 12, 12 and a half million. And then I got like 80K followers that day. Oh, yeah. And mm. then, yeah, it was, I had like 500K in a week. And then everyone was messaging like the influences of, Australia. Australia and I was like fuck and then I started just like going like on building on the momentum of that which is like if my advice to someone if they wanted to do social media is like if you have one thing do well just Flop bash it, it until yeah. it's done because mm-hmm. there's no reason that you should you can even make the video with the exact same title and change the jokes around if you want oh, yeah. like you could just make a hundred of them I'm writing this down right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um yeah so that happened and then I started like the exchange series with um Meso and Chaz which was super popular um, and then I started my YouTube channel on the back of that success and like how relevant that was, which was super hard because I had to get up at six every day. And then I would go for a walk and think of an idea for the um, like series that day. And then I'd have to write the whole sketch and then film it myself. And since I had an A7 III, it didn't have like, you couldn't flip the screen up and yep. watch yourself. Mm, how bad so that? I'd have to set it up on a tripod and then go into frame myself record for a bit and then come back behind the camera like check the record and see if i'm in frame so it would, ta- it would take me all day to film it and then i'd have to edit it all myself and then post it that day and i was posting three times a week and doing a tiktok every day so i was re- i really fucking went for it yeah and then um yeah i was like the youtube was growing and then i got like the youtube plaque which just made me want to go even That's harder huge. and yeah now sitting at like 300k which is good and um, yeah, I kind of like, I kind of lost the motivation for TikTok a little bit because I don't really watch it too much anymore. And I don't, I just feel like, cause I've got, my whole goal was like, I wanted to get a hundred K on TikTok and then I'd be happy. I was like, even if nothing else happens. And then when I did that, you kind of like, is that toxic influencer mindset where you get a goal and then you're like, oh, now hundred K seems like nothing. Yeah. It's um, so I was kind of, I was sitting at around like 800 K before I went to LA last year and I was like, I'm just going to try and get a million followers and then I'm just going to take a step back and focus on <laughs> YouTube. 
And then I was lucky enough to, in LA, get a million followers. Mm. And then, um, yeah, now I kind of just put all my focus into Did it feel as good when you hit million? It, I hit it while I was at a club with oh, heaps of mates unreal. and we were like on the dance floor and I was like refreshing because I was at like oh, 999993 right. or something <laughs> and I was like refreshing and then I like it hit a mil and then I was like holding it up and everyone at the club was like getting around it and stuff and like everyone Drinks was on Dallas. and shit <laughs> and like it was just a cool moment because like it was just at such a good time to hit it so yeah. it did feel as good as I'd hoped it would but then afterwards you realise like it doesn't really matter at all and it's just as if you're like to an extent I if mean, people like in, are enjoying gym what you're making and you're having fun doing it and you're like making money. It doesn't really matter how many followers you mm. have. And even that's something I'm starting to learn with YouTube because I'm like trying to obviously get a million subscribers on there so I can get the plaque. But Lachlan from Fairbairn Films was telling me like, it really doesn't matter like how many subscribers you have. Like if your channel's doing well, then it, like, it doesn't really matter. And yeah. If you're having fun, if you're just doing it because you want to get a number. And that's why I'm like kind of happy I've taken a bit of a step back from TikTok because I was literally only doing it for views mm. and like followers like i didn't enjoy it anymore because it wasn't like as fulfilling <laughs> as me writing out a whole sketch where i can take my time filming it and then get zach to edit it well and yeah and, I, and then i had a lot of other ventures on the side like um writing tv shows that i'm trying to pitch and stuff so it's just doing tiktok was just an actual chore so yeah that's what i need to kind of just Cu- take back a couple of questions on it all firstly youtube plaque does it come how quickly after hitting it does it come and what if you like go back down followers i don't know about the going back down followers thing but um you have to apply for it with so you like when you hit 100k you get like a message on the youtube studio app and they're like oh um you can now apply for the plaque and then you go through this application and you people get denied it like if you've had too many strikes and shit like really so so they won't send it to some people um but then yeah so you go through this application and then it maybe took like a month or something like that and then when it came like in the youtube thing Mm. with the box and like you get the letter from the like ceo and stuff it was so that's so cool cool. do you have to pay for it or is it free the first one's free if you lose it or if i think there's multiple people on the channel you can buy another one Mm. um but yeah mine i didn't have to pay for it what about starting out with content and stuff? Obviously, living in Australia, tall puppy syndrome, like it's a bit weird to be posting. We don't allow that kind of stuff. Mm. Did you get any pushback? Um, I honestly didn't get too much, like, because I waited. I wanted to, I started, like, I made YouTube channels when I was like 12 and 13, when I, mm. and I was like cob montages. And I would just make all these videos and then be too scared to post them because, like, mm. I just wanted to be popular at high school. And I was fucking dumb. Mm. But yeah, I think that that's definitely a thing, especially in the country. Like I'll have people come up to me when I'm home and be like, oh yeah, I really want to do what you would, like, are doing, but like, I'm way too scared of people here bullying me because for some reason <laughs> doing something with your life is fucking cringe. Yeah, <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. Um, but I honestly <laughs> didn't get too much. I got a lot more support like, than I thought that I would because like, I think people could see that I wasn't like, selling out and just doing what I thought would go viral. I was making content that I actually myself found funny and that people were like, oh, that's pretty funny. Like, good on him mm. um but yeah i think people can definitely tell if you're doing it for the right reasons or not so mm. if i think if people can sense that you're just doing it for money or like fame then they'll be mm. like oh that's cringe but definitely way worse in the country than it is in like metropolitan areas but i don't know i honestly reckon and you guys will probably agree that like becoming successful on social media 70 percent of it is like pushing through that like fear of what people are going to think and yeah. then as soon as you don't have that anymore you're like this is not even that hard and as you said before like what even is success like you get to 100k and you're like oh it's just nothing mm. like i need need to double that or i need mm. to triple that so it's like yeah it's hard i think being able to support yourself is like the big dream for a lot of people like just um especially me like coming from being a laborer where i always had no money at all mm. and like i was just like oh, i hate having no money like i hate hating my job and like dreading work and now like i feel like i'm successful because i honestly don't think feel like i've worked a day in the last two and a half years Mm. and i've had like more money than i ever thought i'd make Mm. so i just feel like it's um like it's a success did you did you have any like training or like how did you practice your acting skill set because from like watching your tiktoks i couldn't go and do that like i feel like you actually are a talented actor did you take like classes or was it drama at school i did year eight drama which was compulsory yeah but um and my teacher would hold me back after like all the classes and be like you should do acting and take it seriously oh really but i never like did because um because i grew up in like i didn't grow up in a rich family at all 
and you had to, to get signed to an acting agent, you had to live an at least 90 minute drive from the metropolitan city and Albury's three and a half hours from Melbourne. So I just was like, I, until I can move to Melbourne myself, like mm. there's no way I can because mum can't like move house. Mm. So I just never really went for it or did it because I didn't really want to do plays and I just thought like acting in Albury's not really a thing. So I just, I don't know, I'd always like practice and I honestly don't know. I think it was just something that I was always pretty like naturally talented at from watching so much like Disney as a kid and then I'd try and act like while I was watching it as if I was yeah. in the show. Did you pull any inspiration from anyone? Uh, yeah, Fairbairn Films, 100%, was mm. the people that when I started watching them, they made like... Because I was like, oh, the, the quality of YouTube videos has to be so high that to get them enough subscribers for, to make money that there's no way I can get to that because it was kind of like look, standing at the bottom of the mountain and seeing the whole mountain in front of you and not just taking the first step and then I saw one day uh, the first video I saw was like if Red Dead Redemption was in Australia and it was them and it was like had millions of views and they had like 700,000 subscribers and they've got, like their quality was like f easy to make like their videos are like fucking piss easy to make um and that just gave me the conf like the um, confidence to be like, oh, you don't need the best equipment. You don't need the best looking videos. If you just like, if you want to do comedy, all you need is a funny like joke or like that's all you need. You don't need to like your video to even look good. Mm. Like to get big online, like you just can sit with your phone and tell a joke to the camera. And if it's a funny joke, like it'll do well. So I think, yeah, taking confidence and inspiration from them was like the biggest thing for me, especially with YouTube. And now mm. my content's so similar to them and i'm lucky to be like really good mates with them now so that was yeah. a, that was a big thing what about like tips for for people starting out you know obviously you spoke about before like people who are like they want to get started but they're, they're too afraid to and, and all of that do mm. you like what would push someone to actually get going and, and make that video i honestly always have thought like that because the two driving force the two most powerful driving forces in the universe or whatever of um inspiration and desperation mm -hmm. And I was always inspired. It's just I wasn't desperate enough to do it. And then when I moved out of home, I was like, fuck, I'm not... Because I always just knew that I would do something like this. But I, it was just... I was like, oh, that'll happen in the future. And then when I moved out of home, I was like, fuck, I'm 19. I can hardly afford my rent. I'm literally shit at uni. Like, if I don't do something, then, like, I'm never going to do anything. And, like, I was just desperate. And... um. So that like ties into my advice is like th that like y you just need to do a, sm a very small thing. Even if it's like making a YouTube channel one day and then the next day you like make your profile picture or whatever. Or mm. if it's TikTok, just filming one video. Even if you don't post it, filming one and then looking what you can improve and then the next day filming it again and, mm. and making it better. Because like as soon as you start doing like... If I looked at my career now and like writing shows, doing a podcast and like having, doing all these things, I'd be like, that's so much stuff. It's so hard. It's so intimidating. I can't do it. I can't start. Mm. But if you just break it down to like, I started with posting one single TikTok. It's like, that's something someone can do. And then you just post another one. And then things just start compiling. And you guys would agree. Like you, everyone just looks at the end goal and they're like, that's yeah. so unattainable. But when you just start taking like the tiniest little first step, things just honestly start happening that you wouldn't even have thought would. Yeah. It's like when people look at your profile now, they see 1 million followers or whatever, but they didn't see you spamming videos to get to 15,000 mm. or the one. Like I only saw you exist when you already had like 500K for me. Mm. But I, for me, I didn't see how hard you were trying before that. And it's probably the same with a lot of people. And they see that end goal and then they're mm. very unmotivated from there because they think, oh, he just blew up overnight. And it's like the... It's like this saying where it's like you build a mountain with layers of paint. You just slowly get there. Mm. And it's like step by step. Yeah, I think like that's exactly right because I would do the same when I would look at other people and I'd look at their page and be like, oh, they have so many funny videos. Like I can't even think of one, let alone 50 and they just get in their head and, and then you're just like, oh, like just just start with one. Just, mm. just the smaller you can make your start, the easier it'll be and the less intimidating and then like you just build on that. And like, even though I have like a lot of followers, I've posted hundreds of YouTube videos, like a lot of TikToks, like probably like 500 TikToks. And I've, film I've spent days writing, filming, <clears throat> editing a video and then just been like, this sucks and scrap in it. Like mm. there's so much, it's, no, it's, it's like, there is a lot of work, but it's, it's honestly, the smaller you can make like your starting point, the less intimidating it's gonna be. And 
just do it. Like, yeah. everyone gets so, in, like, they're like, oh, I'll do it later and later, later. Do it after that you listen to this podcast because mm. everyone also thinks that it's like, oh, that probably took 10 years to get to. Like, I, can't, <laughs> yeah. I don't have that much time. Like, oh, that's, it's just a waste. I started TikTok and in like April of 2020 and by August of 2020, I'd like quit my job and was like making good money. And mm. that was, that's like four, five months. Mm. As yeah, like a content creator in Australia, how is it that you support yourself? So what kind of like revenue sources are coming in for you? Cause I think it's a little bit different to us. Oh yeah. What would, would you be. say yours is? Um, well, I've done a lot of different things and like tested the waters with things like merch and Patreon and stuff. But I found like for me, the biggest thing that will, like works is if I just put most of my effort into my YouTube channel, then the AdSense money is pretty good. Um, even though mine isn't as good as a lot of people because my videos are short and like they're not that family friendly at all. So it's like the RPM is pretty shit. But still, if I'm like working hard enough and putting out good videos, then it's going to be good. And I also think for me, I shouldn't make my focus like making heaps of money right now. It should just be putting out really good content because then mm-hmm. the other things that I want to do, like writing and acting, will get more attention. And then yeah. in the end, and, end game. Product. and Jack from the Inspired and Employed said to me, because I was like sad, the start of 2022, I was like, oh, fuck, I, I get such good engagement. I, I just know that I'm making significantly less money than everyone else, even people who are a lot smaller. And he's like, yeah, but like the, that when they were starting out, he's like, we were making nothing and they just put everything back into it. And he's like, if, if you have to live poor for a couple of years and yeah. then get richer in the end than you would have, he's like, who gives a fuck? Like, just do it, like do it well. Mm. So yeah, that's kind of what I took. Like I took a lot away from that and then I just started putting a lot more effort into the content. So really just AdSense and then like the occasional brand deals. Um, now that I'm with my new manager, like the brand deals are quite, like, quite a lot better than anything I'd just get myself. So it's like, picking up a lot and then um hopefully this like my podcast will do one that'll be another Mm. avenue uh revenue stream but yeah yeah i mean it's different for everyone it just depends on what you do like i feel like it's kind of different for people who do comedy to just sell like i i it's harder for me to sell like my knowledge because it's a little bit harder to teach someone how to like tell jokes or act Mm. i feel like so i think the better way for me to make it is just through adsense and making good videos what's like the 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 potion or the ingredients for like a good video for you like before you've uploaded you're like nah this one's gonna hit is it getting other creators involved or is it like all on the idea um honestly with comedy sketches and as fucked as it sounds it's literally just title and thumbnail Mm. I know when a video is going to get over a million views on YouTube and when one's going to get none. And I'm never wrong. On TikTok, I would, I'd thought that that 12 million view video would get nothing and then it got 12 million. And then there's videos where I'm like, I'm certain this will get at least yeah, 5 mil and yeah. they get like 70K. So TikTok's fucked. But YouTube, I know like 99 out of 100 times how well it's going to do. Um, and yeah, it's just title and thumbnail. And like, because really on YouTube, the only things that you need to do is get people to click on your video and watch mm. it. Like, and that's... Like the click through rate's important and like it doesn't matter about likes, dislikes, it doesn't matter about like anything else. It's just getting people to click on it and watch it through. So mm. I think making a video that's pretty I've my videos have gotten a lot shorter than they used to be. I used to I went through a stage where I was making like eleven minute sketches, which were really highly produced and like well done. But it's just people don't fucking have the attention span to watch eleven like I don't know, I don't. I wouldn't watch it. Mm. So when people see like a three minute sketch that's like when your dad finds your vape they're just like oh that, that'll be funny it'll be quick mm, and to the point and then I'll get that yeah. out of the way so yeah I think that's the key is just making good thumbnails I'm lucky that Zach's like a god at Photoshop so a lot of my thumbnails are really good and then the titles but yeah the ideas just come like pretty naturally like if I've gotten to the end of like a month and I need a heap of new ideas like normally it'll just be like a half day brainstorm or like yeah, go for okay. a walk and I'll think of mm. 20 more so it's that's the ideas aren't too hard like for me and I think that you can make a good you can like if you have a good sketch, uh, a good idea, and a shit script, it's gonna suck. And if you have a um, shit idea and a really good like script and good delivery, then it doesn't really matter. So yeah, really. Oh, so yeah. you can like with the idea. Mm. If the idea doesn't matter, then you can go from there. It's interesting. I feel like that's different to TikTok, hey? Yeah. Like TikTok so all over the shop though. I, TikTok, I hate TikTok. I, I hate what it's passion. become. TikTok in 2020 when I was doing it, it was just if you were making good content, you'd get views. Now <clears> it's like <throat> you just fucking po- like people who post like clips from a movie with fucking subway surfers at the bottom. Like, yeah. That'll get yeah, views. yeah. Like they don't care about comedy um, anymore. Like especially my type of comedy like they favor like the jack joseph filming each other type of sketches but they really don't push mm. scripted 
or like film, edited comedy sketches anymore. So I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. But have you found like swimming in the in the comedy circles, your production ideas and stuff, or just videos in general, have improved? Like you probably you're hanging out with a lot more. Comedian yeah, oh, hundred percent. Like I'll ha- like hanging out with more comedians and people who do comedy, like Blake and the Fairburns and everyone like that. Like you just you get inspired by being around people that like mm. it's like if you're hanging around with people from the gym you'll get information on, like you'll learn things when you're around them mm. so even filming videos with other comedians which i do a lot like they um just like from their deliveries and stuff i'll be like oh that's something that i've never thought of or like i wouldn't have thought of playing a girl this way or i wouldn't have like written it like this or whatever and then like i hopefully they learn stuff from me too so it's just like good to mm. surround yourself with like people that are doing similar things to you because it's like that's like Networking is ninety percent of oh, being an influencer. Yeah, which I'm not an influencer. <laughs> yes, you are, mate. So fuck you guys. You're an influencer. <laughs> yeah, 100%. as you guys know, like the way we make money is a little bit different to Dallow. A little bit of ad sense here and there, but not mm. quite at the heights that Dallow does. So we got to hit you with an NTF product plug to keep a roof over our head. Louis and I both have the very flamboyant compound tanks on, which I've been getting spam with messages. When are they restocking? When are they restocking? It's always some item that they want, and we can't give you dates because. There are just a lot of issues in the pipeline, but I can confirm in the next few weeks, there will be a very hype drop of the compound tanks. How's yours going, Lou? Oh, I love it, mate. Just, it keeps me in check Mm. and it makes me look more tanned in winter. I don't know what we did, but like the colors are a little bit more out there Mm. compared to like the other stuff. Like fluoro colors make your skin look darker. Yeah. Ooh, that's some nice material. I might have to get myself You've actually got a few singlets. You've got the other ones. They're very sold out. I actually wouldn't promote it if I didn't like it. They're really, really good singlets and I wear them very frequently. And he promoted it. Diallo asked me the first time, can I get one? They sold out already, so Mm. I couldn't. The second time I reserved him two and then he asked for a year's supply and I said, can't do that, but next time I'll give you some more stuff. So from the next mm. drop, I'll give you some. We got some new colorways. Uh, I think we got an aqua blue in there. So guys, keep your eyes on the socials because yeah, you know how these drops go. Usually the really popular sizes and colors sell out like that. So you do kind of have to be on the ball for it. I'm really excited. It just looks like a rainbow of different gym singlets out there. Other stuff as well. We have uh, different programs. We've got athletic program, power bidding program, meal plans, running pro- programs, everything like that. Make sure you guys get on the website buy those up and they will transform your training. I'm going to get you on the power building and the meal plan because you've been hitting the gym too. Yeah, you're going to see Dalo jacked 2023 20, summer. So mm. it's been a long time coming. Good. Cool. You guys can use code podcast and you'll get 10% off and we'll give you a little kiss. Mwah. Dalo, i got a question for you. Talk to me. You're hanging out with all these. You're an influencer. Not an influencer. I'm a YouTuber he's slash actor because I did one scene in uh, Crazy Fun Park on Stan. Oh, no, not on Stan. ABC Ivy yep. season two. In, you, you're influencing. Um, you're hanging out with all these influencer types. You're doing these, uh, you know, videos with others. Mm-hmm. Has have you ever met a creator? Obviously, you don't have to name them. Although, if you want to, that'd be great. Where you've just been like, you are so different off the camera, or like oh, even fuck. someone who's That's just good like, question. you know, because I feel like in your line of work, you come across them a lot. And we, know, you know, in meeting other influencers and stuff. It's like, oh, you're not actually the type of person you look like on the camera. I mean, 95% of influencers that you meet are completely different off camera, whether it's mm. for the better or for the worse. I, you guys are different to how I thought you'd be for the better. And mm. same with like big prime train. <laughs> and um, like the inspired unemployed are the like main ones and the, the, uh, that I like met. And I was like, you guys are just the exact same people. Mm. And they're like the nicest dudes. Like so, like they'll give you the time of day and like, care about what you're saying and just have i've known people that like met them and they'll just talk to them for 40 minutes about their lives Mm. so yeah they're great and most people are good you get the odd like fucker who's just (laughs) yeah especially in la won't name drop anyone there because fucking yeah but you 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 just meet people and then you meet them and you're like you're just not like who i thought you'd be at all and i yeah I i don't know just some people are just fucking shit yeah they are absolutely and i think especially anyone who like like strives to get as many followers as, as what we have or as what we want you're going to be a bit of a wanker to some because like wanting that amount of attention is concerning i think i think like it it's like you go either way it either makes you really humble and appreciative and you become a much nicer person because you're like oh, it's breath like it's like a relief when you finally get like your first little bit of success but then there's also like the people who get followers on fucking tiktok and they get like 300k and they think they're better than everyone it's like yeah. no mate you just posted your fucking abs like shut yeah, up yeah you hit an algorithm <laughs> Do you but re- yeah no nah, I, I, I don't know i think it goes either way but i like to think that i'm very much the same as i am in my videos i'd say you are 
Fuck yeah. I'd say you're a good fellow, mate. Also, I didn't even ask if I'm allowed to swear on this podcast, but... Yeah, well, yeah you go for it. <laughs> Max will just have a hard time muting every single second word you say. <laughs> we'll get nothing in it. Uh, do you remember the first time we met Dalo? <laughs> <laughs> I do, actually. Do you? I don't reckon he remembers. I don't reckon Dalo remembers. Wasn't the first time at BTV? No. Nah. nah. It so, wasn't. <laughs> big Gabbo and I are in... <laughs> We're having I reckon it. Ben remembers. Do you remember? No. Nah. Nah. Anyway, take it away, Luke. Gab and I were. Did we have blonde hair at the time? Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, we we're hair. probably in our, our peak breakup stage, yeah. feeling a little bit flat about ourselves. We thought we'd head out to public house. We might have got kicked out. We like got KB'd, like didn't get in, or we just decided to maybe, not go to Cal- Maybe. So yeah. we roll it. We go, go to the Swan. The Swan's, a, Swan's a, like the dirty Swan next door. It's, it's, yeah, it's an going. establishment for Gab sure. Gab and I get in, and oh, Liam Dowling's there. It's Dallo. I had a couple of shirts. At the Swan. At the Swan. This is someone I've looked up to quite a bit. I Gab's really like his track. content. Yeah. Yeah. Go up to Dallo. Hey, mate, how are you? Gives us nothing. Really? Nothing. Oh, like, what? couldn't that- have given us less. <laughs> Don't think he looked me in the eye. <laughs> but you were legless, to be fair. Honestly, you had no the idea only which time way was where up. Where I might come across, like, <laughs> somewhat rude <laughs> is when I'm. Fucking smashed, you and like smashed. someone will just come up and like, yeah, I'm like, oh, and yeah, and I don't want to talk to them too much because I'm like, I know that they're just gonna be like, what the fuck? That was the face. Yeah, no, nah. the sw- so the, this is not my fault actually because <laughs> okay, fun yeah, fact yeah. about the swan. Yep. Do you reckon I can say this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. You can say it. So Go. Of approval. The swan. <laughs> I know two people that worked worked there, yeah. and um, they were telling me that one time they were working and I was in there, and their manager came up to him like, "Oh, that's Dalo. Like, we don't cut him off. Like, no, never just, cut him off. Just ever. go for it." And I just don't cut him yeah. off. And I was like, so, yeah. "So honestly, it's not my fault because that's illegal. And they should be cutting me off. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't cut me off." But so <laughs> no, they probably just oversold me drinks, and I was. Legless didn't know what was happening, and I, I took it the I wrong way. We, sh- <laughs> we shook Ben's hand though, didn't we? I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I saw Ben around there. Yeah, I remember Ben. Well, then I met you at BTV, and I was like, like properly met you, and I was like, oh, you're a fucking legend. <laughs> so it all came full circle. <laughs> yeah, it did. I'm did. sorry. I'm I feel sorry. like no, that's no, the no, best no. one. So when you, at least for me, I, we, you probably didn't even know I existed. But like when you don't, you meet the person for the first time, and you don't like each other. Because I was like off you after that. I was like, nah, <laughs> he's giving me nothing. My bloody hero. <laughs> <out here." laughs> uh, I feel like that always leads to like a good kind of friendship. Yeah, it's a good point. I, I remember that night very clearly, mm. actually. That was, that was funny. You, you were on my I well. luckily... You were hammered. I mean, I not luckily, I ironically do not remember that night. Mm. So Probably a good thing. That's like, there's so many people who I've met and I'll meet them like a third time and they're like, mm. we've met twice, but you were smashed both of the times. Yeah, but it is, it is hard, especially when you have people coming mm. up to you. On that, how do you find like like being in someone in the public eye and having people coming up to you? Like, does it wig you out a bit? Not really. I mean, like at the start, it was kind of weird because I went from nothing to like hundreds of thousands of followers in like mm. two weeks and it was COVID lockdown. So I hadn't been outside mm. and I had never <laughs> been, I hadn't been out of Albury and like there's no one there who gives a fuck. So then I went to Sydney for the first time and went out and it was like all at once. Like I didn't really get like a build up to it at all. So that was like kind of intense, but then I was just like, I don't know if any, everyone who comes up to me is always like a legend. They're just like yeah. us. They're just like, oh, hey, Dale, I love your stuff. Mm. Fucking like, do you want to be yeah. whatever? Like that's pretty much all it really is. Like sometimes if I'm sober and I'm at a shopping center and like people will film me without like yeah. thinking I'm not knowing or like people like so that, yeah. clearly like say to their friends when I'm walking past them like, Oh, that's that dude on TikTok. Mm. I'm like, you could be a bit more fucking subtle because it's just weird now. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, no, nah, most of the time it's fine. Like I had some Eshes in Sydney when I was there like the other day and they yelled, this is pretty fucked. They yelled out because they were like, they, they would have been five, two each and they were like <laughs> 12 max. Big heart though. And they had the dog in them. These three white kids. Yeah. And they yelled out and they're like, TikTok. And I was walking with Jackson Fairburn. And everyone was like, oh, yeah, hey, like, they're mm-hmm. clearly taking the piss, like, we were just like, oh, whatever. Yeah. And then one of them yelled out, fight me, N-word. Oh, wow. <laughs> and all these... Went the hard and I was like, What the hell? <laughs> I was like, what the Whoa. fuck? <laughs> <laughs> just, that's that's like, good. Yeah, so, like, not that, good. That's a bit. <laughs> yeah, not good. Not no, good. No, we don't condone that. Interesting interaction. Get her on, mate. Get her on the pod. <laughs> She'd be so awkward. I feel like it's, it's, um, like, do you find you're hyper aware going into like public situations sometimes? Like, are you kind of like, oh, uh, no, nah, I have to like kind of train myself to tune out of it. Like, I, I, a lot more often if I'm with mum or like my sister or like friends, 
mm. they'll be like oh these people like yeah, just yeah, recognize you and i'm like i am so like trying to just be Move tuned forward. out of it now mm. if i but if i'm by myself and i go into any shops i'll always wear airpods yeah like, if i go into woolies in albury without them i'll still be anxious nothing scarier than walking into a shop with a group of 16 year olds in it oh man i'd own. literally t- turn Not the other way no, t- yeah, turn the <laughs> other that's way. why if someone's like oh come meet us at this like club I'm like, I do not want to walk in by myself. Yeah, I don't it. know if it's just you and I, Louis, but you know, when you're at a club and there's lots of people asking for photos, selfies, maybe a line of kids asking for a selfie, it does, you know, females like, who's this guy? Who's this guy? And it makes it a little bit doesn't easier. Oh, it's great. It's great. It's yeah. great. All the, it's great. And I appreciate everyone coming up because it's like, yeah, validates especially. what I'm doing. And they're like, oh, I appreciate what you're doing. And that's like, all you can really hope for is somebody mm-hmm. puts themselves out there. But yeah, sometimes it's, quite intimidating and like sometimes you don't i'm pretty lucky that i don't have really too many instances with this but sometimes you don't know whether someone's taking the piss or not so you don't know whether to be nice or not mm. i'm like yeah, i agree i don't want someone to like be like oh del or like taking the piss and be like oh hey mate how you going? hey man how but, are you He's i like, mean Get away. shouldn't you always like at least for me like respond positively because it's kind of like on them or what about that time when i was with you and they're like gabe we love your videos and you're like fuck off come <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen <laughs> but wait, he wait, says no to photos a lot I've, i don't think i've ever yeah, said no no to photo, photo. Oh, i think that? i think yeah. maybe i was leaving somewhere and there was people who were like can we get a photo i was like oh sorry i gotta run but i think that's like very like maybe once really whereas mm. i was with him and it was just like Barnum. handing out nose left right and center that was at but btv though and i didn't i didn't past it was 12. past 12 past photos. curfew and i said no nah, i'm off the Locking clock in. now put the I'd be like, more photos after 12. I'd be <laughs> it was difficult because they'd be like, oh, please. <laughs> You'll go up to me yeah. and say, hey, do, do you, you guys want to get a photo of <laughs> yeah, yeah, Just wondering. Yeah. I'm so glad I didn't go to BTV. Oh, but what I was trying to get at, which you avoided, is it makes it easier with girls when you're out, when heaps of people are coming up to you. Or is that just just me? Uh, it makes it easier me being a 10. So. A 10. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah, it's, nah, no, it's good. Okay. But I feel like it's also bad with that because then it's like, wrong like wrong bad intentions oh, you take what you can get oh, <laughs> in this day yeah, and age you don't pick and choose <laughs> sorry i'm not gonna get with you because uh you, you only know because of yeah yeah what about like crazy experiences and stuff i mean you've obviously got some pretty cool management now like you get to do some cool stuff i assume you get to fly you know different places for what you do mm. what's been like a couple of pinch yourself moments um i was in la to, like at a random club bar thing and we were hanging out with young gravy and that was pretty fucking sick <laughs> and That's he was cool. just like loving us because we were aussie and i was just, we were just with him and because his mates was one of our mates That's and then sick. i was like and that was just after that new song of his came out what's it fucking called oh yeah, that big tiktok one the How- betty is it betty yeah uh yeah he loves the mums yeah, yeah that just came out so he was like massive mm. didn't you um, say he's like seven foot tall he's six nine Really? Yeah, there's a photo of me and him on my Instagram and it looks like I'm sitting and he's standing. We're both standing up. Fuck. It's fucked. Yeah, you show me And that. I'm not like a short dude either. So it's, it's yeah, it's crazy. Um, I got flown to Japan like two weeks ago uh, by a clothing company. That's wild. And then I just got the whole trip for free and we had some pretty cool experiences there. That was mm. pretty dope because I was like manifesting wanting to go to Japan. But even just like a pinch myself moment for me was just like f- f- being able to fly myself to LA because that was mm. just something that a, like a year two years prior i was like i will never have like three thousand dollars for flights like mm. i'll never have that much money bro how expensive is la just like everything oh. there cost quadruple what our airbnbs Melbourne. were 10k a month yeah no legit really yeah. so it's fucking not cheap and it's mm. not my favorite place on the on the planet mm. so i definitely recommend go to new york instead yeah new york's mm. dope my favorite place in the world new york is probably my favorite place in the world as well mm. it's so fucking good i want to talk about your podcast Please. But first, we got to do some sponsors. Oh, a bit of housekeeping. Bit of housekeeping. Should we start off with Laddie? Whoop. Whoop. Yep, so the Whoop trucks our sleep. Mm. I reckon if Dallow wore the Whoop, it would not be happy with him most It'd nights. It'd probably blow up. Even one beer will say you've got 1% recovery and you're better off respawning at this point. <laughs> so if you do want to stay a bit more accountable and track your insights, because I believe what gets trucked, you know, gets improved. And I think it's made us more accountable with it. You know, when you're 100%. ready to peak for a good run. Yep. 100%. And so if you want to do the same and get like literally the most elite insight tracker for, for health, fitness, just, I don't know, your own accountability, you can get the whoop. Mm. You can click on whoever you like more's link in their bio, Louis or Gab. We have our own affiliate links for whoop and you can sign up. You get one month for free, which whoever's link you get and you'll get yourself a whoop 
and it is a great investment into yourself. You should do it. We also have Manscaped, Gab. Mm -hmm. They've stuck with us for a while. Yeah, very long time now. We love Manscaped. We do. What do you like about them? The Lawnmower 4.0. I yep. show up every week and I say the Lawnmower 4.0. Yeah. I've, it helps me. I, um, I don't have the beard trimmer yet because I don't think it's out in Australia. So I just straightened it up a little bit with the old lawnmower. Mm. I don't think that's what it's designed to do. But I just got the comb and then got the lawnmower. Nice. Just a little bit like that. Cleaned it's it up. Sharp. Is it all right? Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah. I'm liking it. So, you know, experimenting with a bit of the hair, but also like shave the legs with it. I don't know if there's anything else from Manscaped you're liking at the time being. Um, nah. Nail clippers. Nail clippers are good. They if, got a nice vanity pack. If you're going on dates and whatnot, clip mm. your nails just in case. Give them a file as well. Yeah, a file. Just make sure they're nice and spick and span. And make sure you use code NTF at checkout because you'll get 20% off on free shipping. And you'll be looking like 10 times a man that you did before. Fantastic. Dello. Or just bite your nails and pull your hairs out. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> thanks, mate. We won't get paid for this podcast. Yeah, All good. Yep. Speaking of podcasting, uh, you could talk the batteries out of a microphone, mate. Um, Thank you. You're running your own podcast. <laughs> I am. Couldn't be more, exci <laughs> <Talk> <laughs> Couldn't Sorry, be more excited. Couldn't be more excited. I'm yep. starting it with two of my best mates, uh, Ben and Henry. They are just the funniest people. So yep. it's it's good because um, we, uh, we, we, I feel like we're doing a service more so than anything. You know, it's fun for us, but we, we're providing. It's the Sunday Sessions podcast. Australia needs it. Yeah, well, because we all go out. We love a couple of beers. Even you gym influencers love going out. Never. I can't wait to get on. No. Nah, so on a one. Sunday, you wake up, you're feeling pretty shit. You scroll on Uber Eats, you can't find anything, and you're like, I feel shit. Mm. What can I do? And at the moment, there's nothing. But April 23rd... April 23rd. There's the Sunday That's Sessions four podcast. four days away. Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's coming out soon. We've recorded four apps. And Monday? I can confidently Sunday. say that they are, like, funnier than any of the sketches I've ever posted. Like, the stories are so hilarious. And, um, yeah, it's just a good, relaxing podcast that you can listen to on a Sunday, make you feel less shit about the decisions you've made over the weekend. Awesome. So, the, the podcast is out by the time this yeah, episode it's, released. It was oh, out yesterday. What the hell? Yesterday, it was out. So, not April yeah. 23rd, yesterday, April yesterday. 23rd. That's crazy. Because yeah. <laughs> today's 24th. Um, so, what, yeah, you're talking about life? We're talking Give about everything, rundown. really. Come on, we're, sell it to uh, us. we're running through our weekends. We've got some fun segments. Um, you know, we're talking about the bad decisions we make over the weekend because, uh, as you can probably tell, we're not saints. And no. I do love <laughs> the occasional bevy or 50. So we make mistakes <laughs> and we share them for everyone else so that they feel a little bit less shit about their mistakes, which is honestly something that I feel like I need. Mm. So I'm just going to listen to my own podcast called an Sunday. AA meeting, mate. Yeah, well, <laughs> that, if that's what you want to call it. But um, no, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And it's something that I'm really like passionate about doing because I love talking. And I love hanging out with my mates and they're only going to hang out with me if they're getting paid to be on a podcast. So that, it's good. It's a win-win. That's fantastic. Is that, we've found podcasting to be like the best thing in terms of, because you de designate an hour a week mm. to actually sit down and talk to someone, albeit there's microphones and cameras, mm. you get so much out of it. That's yeah. what, yeah, I agree. That's what I was kind of hope, like uh, realized with it as well. Like if there's anything on your mind, you just kind of share it on the podcast. And then afterwards you're like, oh, I don't really, really need to think about that anymore mm. because... I've talked about it and now it's like, I'm not, it's not on my mind. Cause yeah, Louis, Louis and I, like we're so busy. Sometimes it'll be a week and we don't even like have like a proper conversation with each other. Cause mm. we're so like all over the place in the podcast. Like it's sometimes it's less about the content we get out of it, yeah, but it's just yeah. about like an authentic chat to mm. me and Louis and it feels mm. unreal at the end of it. Yeah. So, um, Follow the uh, podcast Instagram page, Sunsesh Pod on Instagram. That's S U N S E S H Pod on Instagram. One a week? Is that every Sunday? One a week, every Sunday. Mm. Tune in every Sunday. I already followed it. I'm, Thank you very much. I'm dialing in. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Mm. I'm super excited. It's very funny. Mm. We have a brimming mailbag, I believe. We do. And all the fans want to ask you lots of questions, mate. Fire yep. him away. Fire him away. Here he is. He's I'm ready to go. I'm not scared on. of anything. Let me Except for buttons. snakes. Are you? Yeah, hate them. Okay. Yeah, I can't do snakes. Hey, so snakes. we have Luca on Snapchat. He asked what happened on his most regretful night ever. Oh, oh God. That's a good question. I know. Thank Luca's been rubbing his brain cells together <laughs> for that. That's a great question, mate. He's got um, a little purple nice. bitmoji there. Mo most regretful night. Jeez. Where do we start with this one? This one. <sighs> the other night in Mansfield, it was pretty regretful because um, I started drinking a little bit too early in the day Ooh. and um, yeah, ended up being a little bit too smashed and uh, fell down the stairs at the Mansfield pub. Mm. So that wasn't great. Got, I pulled a piece of glass out of my back the next day at next 12 o'clock and it was covered in blood. So mm. 
of recent memory that my i'm a bit of a goldfish so i don't know there's probably something else but i feel like i just try and not have too many regrets in life yeah you don't think mm. about it too much is that all is that the most i thought there would have been a way worse story <laughs> from you anyway that's all that's allowed well maybe probably not anything i could say on the podcast maybe on the sunday maybe for the sun- well, yeah so. yeah yeah, tune into the Sunday session this podcast. I'll re-answer that. <laughs> Absolute legend named Will Mello. He says, "Why is your sister so fit?" Do you have an answer? No. Okay. Leave. <laughs> okay. Cool. I don't know. If you That's think sweet. that, then I'm sure she'll be happy about Genetics. it. Genetics. Let me scramble Genetics. for the next one then, mate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oscar Burke says. Do you still have the same love for content as you did when you started? Love you, lads, in the podcast. That's a good Keep question. Um, yes, I do, but it's changed. I originally just loved to like physically making TikToks and seeing them at the end and being like, oh, I'm happy with that and posting it. Now it's more so I, I get more excited about things like the podcast or writing the shows that I'm trying to pitch to the networks or even like when I have a really good YouTube idea and I know it's going to do well, I'll be super excited to make that. And then if it comes out as good as I'd envisioned, I do for sure. But it's harder. It's hard to have the same passion for something like TikTok, which is so oh, repetitive. Oh, mate. I think we all, all of us have lost passion for TikTok. <laughs> I, I think, TikTok. I think like I, um, I mix it up on YouTube when I'm getting bored and stagnant. Like I'll change, I'll do something different and then that'll be fun. Like I'll do mm. an alcohol review or, um, mm. me and Ben just filmed a video uh, drunk Aussies take the American citizenship test. I'll just do some shit like that, and then it gives me a little bit of a breakaway. And I'm like, oh, that's like kind of like a week. That's like a or like a day where I don't really have to think about making a sketch. Because sometimes yeah. forcing yourself to make sketches and trying to be like, I need to be funny today is hard. Like if it's like, oh no, I just need to like get a video film, I need a vlog, even if I'm doing nothing. I feel like that's sometimes easier than being like, I have no ideas. I'm gonna scour my brain and just try and make a joke because most of the time it'll be shit. Like you kind of just have to naturally think of something or like something will happen and you're like, that's something I can make a joke out of. So yeah, I definitely have the same love for doing it. It's just kind of shifted away from short form and into more like serious things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. some of these questions are pretty bad, but mm. we have Jack Vanden Dolder. Is he planning on moving to New York? Originally, yes, I was going to move for three months this year in summer, like their summer. But now with the podcast, I'm kind of, I really am motivated to make that as like successful and funny and build it up as much as I can. So I'm like, I need to stay because I need to be here to do that. Like I can't fucking do it on Zoom. I can't. Nah. There's just, there's like, there's not, it's kind of, that's my focus now. And it sucks because I really wanted to do it. I really wanted to move because I love New York, but I'm just like, uh, it'll happen when it's supposed to happen. I can just go visit for two weeks and get that kind of New York fix out of the way. But I definitely yeah. want to do it. It's just, I know that this is something I have to do and it's something that I want to do. So yeah, yeah no, not this year. I think New York accommodation was even more expensive than LA for me. Yeah, ours wasn't, but our places were way smaller. Like yeah. 10K a month, but we had pretty nice places. My room was like literally just a bed. That was it and it was 500 a night. It was <laughs> insane. A night? A night you in Chelsea. You should have gone to like East Village and gotten just like a one bedroom apartment. Yeah, I needed to explore Pay a little like bit 3K more. 3K for two weeks or something. But we should go over to New York for two weeks and just like sleep in the subways and it'd be lit and See low who budget. Makes it out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, mate. It's, every time I go to New York, it's just a two week blowout at Doc Holidays. Really? Oh, it's mm. fucked. Is it? Do they have big blowouts here? Oh, it's, yeah, it's lively. Mm. Not the nightlife the, is it, it the exists. nightlife in New York. I found was way better than LA because oh. LA you have to pay two hundred US cover to get into a damn club, and everyone in there is just like not talking, like to the trying to look hot. New York, it's just a bunch of Europeans and New oh. Yorkers who are just like, let's get drunk. Who cares? They love the Aussie accent, don't they? Yeah, New York, not so as like not. It's they don't wank you off as much in New York. Not, they don't really care. They probably meet a lot of foreigners, whereas like oh. LA, everyone, yeah. LA, everyone's like. Oh my God, you're Australian. Oh my God. I think the first night I landed in New York, my head was on a swivel because it was literally the most beautiful girls I've ever seen really? in my life. Like it shit on any single city or state in America. I've I say New York. Yeah, New oh, York yeah. for me. Yeah. Like LA didn't even, yeah, sorry to be. So girls, 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 but LA didn't, like wasn't that good. I thought New York was insane though. Yeah, New York, you walk down the street and you're like, I can't believe that this many good looking people exist. Yeah. Even dudes as well. You're just like, mm. fuck. Love that. Mm. Mate, <clears throat> thank you. Anyone have no, anything else? No, 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 Luke, no, thank no, you. I won't. Thank, thank you, guys. No, thank you. Do you have any parting w- words? 
Um, yeah, buy the NTF merch because it's actually good quality. And nice. I really, really like the singlets. And I wish that I had more than two, but apparently I'm not that important. No, I'm, I'm not gonna, that good I'm of a friend. Gonna, so, <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting on the next shipment to come down and I'm actually going to send you singlets and shorts. And we'll Buy the there. merch so that maybe one day Gab will buy me a beer at the Skinny Dog instead of Probably me not. buying Bro, I beer. bought Probably you not. three the other night. He's walking out. Nah, that didn't happen. The king of the... Yeah, apparently I do that a lot. But <laughs> the king of the Irish goodbye. I always Irish repay my... <laughs> <laughs> right. um, no, yeah, well, thank you guys very much for having thank me on you, the mate. pod. Two good mates. This isn't a transactional thing. But listeners, I genuinely really like these guys. I think you should take what they like their advice and what they have to say because I know that I've been to the gym with Gab a couple of times and it's honestly like been very insightful so yeah keep supporting the fellas mm. go support me as well if you don't support him everyone thank you guys thanks for mate. thanks guys bye. see you bye